you can stay at campgrounds for an average of just $5 a night. With water and electric. We will share the scoop next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul and... <laughs> and, and, this... I'm, and I'm Liz. <laughs> These are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. And you will certainly live amazing if you can camp for under $5 a night. That's what we're doing. We are actually staying in real campgrounds with water and electricity for less than $5 a night. And the truth is, I mean, we couldn't be full-timers. No. If we didn't, no. if we were not able to, to do it on the cheap. I mean, that's the number one question that we get asked is, how can you afford to do this? Later in the video, we'll go over our actual campground expenses for the year. Well, I've been camping since the 90s and most of my early camping was in the Kentucky area and campgrounds were 20 to 35 a night. And I think you would be hard pressed to find it that cheap and still get electric and water. Campgrounds now, I would say the averages are about $50 a night if you've got hookups. 30 times 50 is 1500 bucks. I mean, $1,500 is, is still a lot of money. And we're doing it for less than five a night. So the way we keep our expenses down on the campground fees is through something called Thousand Trails. And honestly, if you're gonna be full time or if you do a lot of camping, Thousand Trails is the way to go. They make it so affordable. So grab a notebook. We will go over the Thousand Trail memberships and give you the names of two people to call with any questions you may have. Paul and I have been full-time RVers since October, November, 2018. We both were solo for a year before meeting and becoming a couple. Paul purchased his Thousand Trail membership before hitting the road, and I bought mine after five months on the road. Together or separately, we have stayed at 25 Thousand Trails campgrounds so far. So Thousand Trails has 81 campgrounds across the nation. It's really important if you're interested in this membership to look where they are, because as you can see, most of them are on the perimeter of the nation. If you only want to camp in the center of the nation, Thousand Trails is probably not for you. Now, what are the campgrounds like? So most, if not all, are gated. There's activity centers, lodges. Most have pools, dog parks, playgrounds. They have a lot of amenities. Horseshoes, yeah. <laughs> Shuffleboard. Tennis court. Pickleball courts, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the Thousand Trails campgrounds are huge. I've stayed at some that are three, four, five hundred acres. There's one I stayed at, Lake of the Springs, has its own lake and it's clear and you can go swimming in it. Yeah, I stayed at the same park when we were still solo. It had its own store, it had a lodge, they were serving breakfast on weekends, they had dinner nights. Um, another campground I stayed at was the one in Bend, Bend Sun River, Oregon. They actually have a lazy river in the park where you can grab a tube and float down and you're floating for an hour and then they'll come pick you up. Another beautiful park is in the mountains behind Santa Barbara. It's called Rancho Oso. They have horses. You can rent a horse for the day and go for a ride on the trails that branch off from the park. Yeah, it's beautiful. You feel like you're on your own ranch retreat. It's really nice. You know, and a lot of the parks have their own stores or they have concerts, movie nights for the kids. They have a lot of activities. Right now, some of the activity centers are closed due to the pandemic, but um, I'm sure that's going to... Um, as I've been saying to people, this too shall pass. So the cheapest way to get into Thousand Trails is to get a camping pass. It's $599 for the year, and it allows you to camp for free in any of five zones. Now you have about 18 to 23 campgrounds per zone, and you can camp for four nights back to back from park to park, or you can camp for two weeks and then you need to be out of Thousand Trails for a week and then you can come back in for up to two weeks. If you divide $599 by 365, then you're looking at $1.60 something a night. So another way to look at the cost is take that $50 a night average that we talked about. 14 nights at $50 a night is 700 bucks. Yeah, a two week stay and you've paid for the zone pass and, and you still have it for the rest of the, for the other 50 weeks out of the year. Of course, you're limited because you can only make reservations like 60 days out. Some of the more popular campgrounds, you might have a little trouble getting into them on a 60 day window. Right, like Florida in the winter or 
Oregon, Pacific Northwest in the summer. Yeah. So, and really, if you're full time, you probably don't want to limit yourself to one zone. You want to travel, right? right. And see the country. Right. So, we recommend a Thousand Trails membership, and that's what Paul and I have. And we, we actually each had our own until we met, and then we combined into one. Right. But a membership will allow you to stay longer and you can book further out. In our membership, we can stay for 21 nights and then we can go to another park and stay for 21 nights. And we can do that all year long, up to 21. So we can stay seven nights here, 10 nights there. Yeah. There's no restrictions and there's no fees. So the way a, a Thousand Trails membership works is that you pay a rather high initiation fee, just like as if you're joining a country club, but then you just have an annual fee that's about 600 a year. But what the membership does is it allows you to go anywhere in the 81,000 trails campgrounds and not, not 81,000, 81. 000, 81. <laughs> in the 81 campgrounds that Thousand Trails has. <laughs> There is a window, and this is kind of important because my membership, I had a 90-day window. Um, with, These are reservation windows. Yes. And so this is why the memberships are different tiered. The more you pay, the further out that you can make reservations and the longer you can stay. On the top membership, you can book out five months, 180 days in advance, and stay for up to 28 nights. If you're going to full-time, then I would say the 120-day window is perfect. I found the 90-day window to be a little tight. Yeah, you had a hard time getting into I some did. parks in yeah, Oregon. Yeah, the, the, the really popular parks fill up real fast. And you can book online or you can call either way. It's really easy and fast to do it online. How high is that fee? <laughs> yeah. It can be pretty high. So it can be 7000 up to 13000 if you buy directly from Thousand Trails. And they often do have specials. Again, we're going to give you the names of two people to call. Or you can pay about half that um, if you go on the secondary market and buy a used membership. So there are advantages and disadvantages of buying directly from Thousand Trails or buying on the secondary market. If you buy directly from Thousand Trails, you can use your membership right away. They may be able to throw in some bonuses like some extra campgrounds and they can actually finance for you. Full disclosure, we both bought on the secondary market, mm -hmm. um, but one of the detractors is you're probably not going to be able to use the membership if you buy it on the secondary market for, for I would say three months. Three months and that means you can't even make a reservation right. for three months and what's happening is they're transferring the membership from the original owner to you. It takes a long time because it's going through Thousand Trails corporate. There's a lot of people ahead of you so mm -hmm. you know that's just something to be aware of going in and the other thing is to know who, you, who to buy from. We will give you a name of somebody, Kim, at Campground Membership Outlet. We both bought from her. Right. We recommend her. We don't recommend buying on eBay. Uh -uh. There <laughs> no. are there are landmines with, with the secondary market. Yeah, definitely yeah. go through Campground Membership Outlet if you're gonna buy secondary. And another thing to do is to take that membership number and call Thousand Trails member services and make sure that that's a good membership number. I paid $4,600 for my Thousand Trails membership. I got it through Campground Membership Outlet, as we mentioned. But that $4,600 divided by 365 days works out to under $13 a night. Mm -hmm. I mean, it pays for itself so fast. So it's still under, well under the average um, that you're going to pay um, for campground fees. Right, and campground fees are often the biggest expense of going full time. Yeah. So we're thrilled that this just allows us to, to breathe easy. If you ask around, you will get wildly different opinions as to which Thousand Trail campgrounds are the best and which to avoid. And what I learned on this was just to see for myself because someone's list of what they really like is different for me. Somebody else may really have to have internet or someone else may want to have playground. But there's only one that I would not 
I, I have no interest in ever going back. <laughs> and it's the same one for me. And really, it was just too urban for us. Most yeah. of them are not in urban areas. Most are out in the country. In fact, some are really remote. There's a bunch that are on the beach. We've been on the beach for the last couple months. We belong to a Facebook page that has the, the, the good and the bad of Thousand Trails or something like that. I remember we were going to Long Beach in Washington, and I, and I looked, I searched for that park, and... And somebody said it's the worst experience ever. And it's a parking lot. Well, you know what? It is a parking lot, and we both like it anyway because this parking lot is right on the beach. There's like eight miles of biking trails. You yep. can walk on the beach. It's a lovely park. Yep. And There's a trail that leads right out of the park that takes you right to the beach. And it's close to a really cute beach town, so you can go and you know go out to eat and just enjoy all the activities there. It's not yep. remote. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely our advice would be to go see for yourself. As a matter of fact, we are here at Birch Bay, and we had friends that were going to come here, and then they heard, what, don't come, Yeah, right? some neighbor of theirs where they're at now said, oh, it's horrible there, don't come here. And, and it's, there's nothing, I mean, it's it's kind of a parking lot. A lot of them are that way. We, we are in an area with trees. We have trees around us, so it's very nice. There is a phase two section is, is no trees, no shade. I think I would have a different opinion if I were in phase two, but, but where we are, we're, it's a beautiful setting. So here's the thing to think about. If you're used to camping only in state parks, where you put your camper into your site and you can't see your neighbors, Thousand Trails, for the most part, is not like that. There are some campgrounds that are very secluded, but for the most part, the campgrounds are located in high dollar areas. And when you're in a high property values, the campsites are going to be smaller. So campgrounds that are on the beach, we find smaller sites. The campground in Las Vegas, the sites were especially small. Yeah. 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 You know, so that's something to take into account. And any campground, we're talking KOAs, anything, any private campground is going to try and maximize the land they have. So if you want to camp and never see your neighbor, I don't know that Thousand Trails would be the answer. Yeah, probably not, um, because most parks, like you say, are the, the sites are relatively close together with not a lot of um, privacy. I mean, some are. I, when I was at Bend, when I was at Pacific City, both sites I had there, I mean, I could have walked around naked and nobody would have known. But what we're finding, the longer we're on the road, the more it's about living this life and getting out exploring and also talking to our neighbors. We're meeting people at every park we go to, making mm -hmm. friends, and uh, yeah, it's great. It's so fun when you see them again. I met some people in Yosemite that I met up again with in Palm Desert. We met some people in Cottonwood that we yeah. met up with again in Oregon somewhere. You're building a family, I mean, you know, on the road. Yeah. So the beauty of the Thousand Trails membership is that we save so much money, it allows us to go outside of the park and spend money in private campgrounds guilt-free. And recently, we were staying in the Olympic Peninsula in Washington, and we realized even though we were in a Thousand Trails campground, we wanted to be closer to Olympic National Park. So we just went ahead and on the spur of the moment, made reservations for three nights at 55 a night, in a private campground right and it was yeah. just no big deal because our monthly camp site cost is so low for us last year we stayed 26 nights outside of the thousand trail system and spent fifteen hundred and sixty five dollars so using the six hundred dollar annual dues that we pay that's fifty dollars a month now if we were stationary it would be a different story you can camp seasonally monthly seasonally, yeah and and the and the cost goes way down when you when you pay uh, a monthly uh, yeah fee. but some of those campgrounds i stayed monthly when i first started this life i spent 385 dollars a month staying in a campground in florida but it was really run down to get a decent campground even remote out in the woods would probably be 700 a month and i know people that pay 1600 or 2000 a month to winter in florida and, um, you have to be careful with those monthly fees because a lot of them don't include electric if you're going to buy a new membership we have a contact for you his name is eric benson his number is right here on the screen be sure to let him know that we sent you to him and know that he has a special deal for you his rates are actually cheaper than if you called the thousand trails general phone number 
If you decide to buy from the secondary market, we highly recommend Kimberly at Campground Membership Outlet. Again, Paul and I got our memberships from her. Her phone number is on the screen and please tell her that we sent you. So our experience with the 24 campgrounds we've been to in Thousand Trails has all been on the west side of the country, Arizona, Nevada, California, Oregon, and Washington. Yeah, we haven't made it to Texas or the East Coast, and if you have, let us know in the comment section what you thought of those places.